Hi everybody, Brian Foote here to tell you about why the price earnings ratio is so important. You know that uh, Buffett has said, price is what you pay, value is what you get. I think this is one of his great quotes. Um, PE, the price earnings ratio, is one of the simplest things to calculate. It's very easy to understand and it's a very useful tool for you to get started. It's not the be all and end all of, uh, of your uh, valuation or, or, or stock picking methodologies, but it is a nice starting point because it's so easy to calculate and it's so widespread. The price multiplied by the share outstanding uh, represents the equity value of the business. Uh, so your stock price multiplied by the number of shares outstanding gives you the total value of, of the business, uh, the equity value. Uh, you're buying a fractional interest in that business, so that share represents your fractional ownership in the, in the business's net assets. Um, and as a result, uh, a fractional ownership of that business is earnings. Step back for a minute, um, because this, this makes a lot of sense. If you think about yield, uh, when you say you get an interest rate on a CD, you go and get a certificate of deposit down at the bank. If you put 10,000 into a CD at 5%, the 5% yield that the bank gives you, simply put, you're getting $500 a year. You can uh, bank on that, ha ha. What do you get if you own a piece of a business, a uh, $10,000 share in a business that gives you earnings of $500? Uh, the earnings yield is, is 5%. Right? Uh, whether or not they dividend that out to you is another story, but that earnings, the net income of that business, $500, divided by the $10,000 is a 5% yield. So just like the bank uh, gives you a promise and a certificate of deposit, it's a promise that they're gonna give you 5% on that $10,000. They're also gonna give you back the $10,000 uh, and that's insured a business uh, that's Similarly, $10,000 investment that's throwing off a 5% uh, earnings yield is, uh, is a similar instrument. Uh, again, we haven't talked about risk. We haven't talked about the fact that you've lent the bank money and the bank is insured and you've put uh, money into a stock which could go to zero. Uh, but that's a 5% yield, 500 over 10,000. If you flip it over, if you invert it, right, remember, back, uh, you know, in, 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 in fractions, uh, invert it, you've got a 20 PE. So you could correctly say that a CD, a PE ratio of a 5% CD is a 20 PE. But here's the difference. Uh, there's a few, a few, few major differences, including the fact that um, when, someone's, when someone shops around for CDs, the differences in yields are minuscule. That's primarily for a few reasons. The rates are effectively guaranteed by the bank, uh, backstopped by, uh, by, by the Federal Reserve, or you know, more correctly, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the FDIC. Uh, CDs uh, are basically a commodity, one bank to the next. You're, you're putting money in, uh, you're going to get 5% out or 5.01. Banking is very competitive. You may see a 5.1 or a 5.05 yield or something like that, but there's not really a big spread in, in, in CD yields, right? Prim again, because it's, uh, banks are highly regulated, your, your money is very safe, and uh, banking is effectively a commodity, right? You might like your bank manager more than the other one, and the teller is, is nicer to you, but that's, that's really the differentiator. For thinking along the same things, in, in, in stocks, the earnings yield, uh, the inverse of your PE, again, that 5% on a 20 PE company, that, that PE, uh, that, that earnings yield can be wide from one company to the next, from one industry to the next. Uh, but just remember, if you're looking at a PE of 100, that represents a 1% earnings yield. That may not be good or bad, right? I mean, you know, it could be very, very expensive, right? If you're, if you're paying a hundred times earnings for a company, a couple things, right? You better be right uh, because, um, again, that's one fifth the the yield of a uh, of, of a CD, uh, and again, a hundred PE could um, mean other things. We'll, we'll talk about that later. What about a PE of 10 in the same industry, right? So you have one company that trades at 100 times earnings. 
1% earnings yield. Similar business is trading at 10 times earnings, a 10% yield. So in a vacuum, two businesses in the same industry, uh, you have one that the PE is 10X that, 100 versus the other one that's a 10. Uh, everything else uh, being equal, and we'll talk about all the different nuances in, in our course together, but the PE of 10 is cheaper, right? For, for every $10,000 you put into that company, you, you can expect if nothing changes, if the company continues to do those earnings, you'll get a 10% yield. Uh, it, you won't get the money out the way it is with the CD necessarily, but that's a $10,000 kicking off 1,000 in earnings versus the other company, 10,000 kicking off $100 in earnings. So if you're buying a business for a million privately that throws off 100,000 in earnings, um, you'll think about it as a company you're paying a PE of 10. Think about it one way. If you never see a change in the earnings, you'll be paid back. If, if you own 100% of that business and you could take out 100% of the earnings in 10 years, you'll have a 10 year payback on that PE of 10 in a private market. Again, in the public markets, they don't have to dividend it out to you, but effectively that's what it is. Your earnings yield of 10% means in 10 years, all else being equal, uh, you'll, have, you'll have a 10 year payback if, if all the money is dividended out. The stock market sometimes has companies trading at 100 times earnings. Does that mean you're gonna be paid back in 100 years? If you, if you went and bought a private company at 100 times earnings and the business remained the same, right? That private company would, at PE of 100, pay you back in 100 years. But those 100 PE companies often are extremely high growth companies, right? Implicit in a PE ratio and why, one of the reasons PE is understood, impl implicit in paying a very high multiple is assuming a very rosy future, right? Um, does, does the market overpay? Yes, potentially it does. A couple things, right? As I said in the beginning, a PE multiple is the beginning of investigation. It's not the end. So again, if you're saying a, a high growth company trading at 100 times earnings, maybe its peers are trading at 50, the company might once have traded at 200 times earnings and the earnings are growing. But what you need to think about is both comparative analysis in that case, looking at other companies, looking at their multiples, but also doing comparative analysis across a time series, right? What kind of earnings were there last year, the year before? How is that growth looking? So second thing that I, I think, so PE is a good filtering tool. Um, that way. Um, PE can be used to tell you, at least on the surface, if the market is over or underpaying for a company, but you need to know a few things, right? Comparison to other businesses, the earnings prospects of the company that you're examining, and also the cyclicality of the company you're looking at, right? Sometimes you see some companies that generate massive earnings in good times. I'm thinking commodity companies, shipping companies, uh, transportation companies are sometimes like this generally, but, but shipping companies certainly because there's a high cycle to it. Uh, sometimes uh, at, at the peak of earnings, it looks like you're paying, a, you are indeed paying a very low earnings multiple, but then competition comes in, other factors, right? The economy is cyclical and the multiple you're paying on that particular year might look low, but then you need to look ahead at the coming year. These, again, the beginning of investigation Secondly, what I want you to think about is that earnings are not cash flow. What's reported in, uh, in, in, in your uh, earnings call uh, or your quarterly reports from the companies is well, generally, or it should be gap earnings, generally accepted accounting principles. These are an accounting construct. This, the language of accounting ties uh, income, it has to tie income back to cash flow, but it's not necessarily the same thing. Um, so the E in PE, uh, you need to, to further examine what the capital needs of the company are um, and, and, and sometimes uh, other, other cash needs there. Um, one of the other things that we can consider later is, are those earnings potentially suppressed by the fact that the company is investing heavily in things like research and development in sales, general, uh, sales and marketing under SG&A, Sales General Administrative, to grow the brand or to grow new products, in which case uh, a high PE 
might behind the scenes uh, indicate that the company is actually under earning and actually creating some assets. The classic case of this was when Amazon was always looking like it's trading at a very high multiple. It was, but it was also investing heavily in uh, R&D into uh, some of the cloud uh, business uh, or, or the cloud business that it did create. But anyway, PE is a good start. Uh, if you like this, please remember to subscribe. Um, lots of great stuff ahead, but thanks for joining. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, we look forward to sharing more with you. Thanks.